This is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell and Stacy Jensen. News 25, local news you can count on. News is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Give them a call, 727-9900. Welcome to News 25. So happy you could be here on this Christmas Eve. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. And I'm Stacey Jensen. It's Friday, December 24th, Christmas Eve. Well, it's not a happy Christmas Eve for travelers across the United States after 651 U.S. flights have now been canceled. No, it's not because of the usual reason, the weather at this time of year, but it's because of the Omicron virus. The highly contagious virus has depleted the workforce this holiday season with flight crews calling out sick and testing positive for COVID. Besides the hundreds of flights canceled, there's almost 9,500 delays so far. This according to the website Flight Aware. And many cities are also canceling or altering their New Year's Eve festivities following the uptick in the virus. New York City says they are scaling back their celebration. Fewer attendees will be allowed in Times Square. The mayor is saying they may cancel the event altogether, but for now they are requiring masks and proof of vaccination. Las Vegas says they continue to plan to launch their fireworks per usual at the top of at least eight hotels in the city. There is also a downtown Las Vegas fireworks show planned. Well, Amargosa Fire Department, Beatty Fire and Ambulance, and the Knight County Sheriff's Office, Nevada National Security Site Fire Crews, and Valley Electric Association were dispatched to a structure fire last night in Amargosa. The residential two-story home is located on Palo Verde Street. Amargosa Fire and Rescue reports that the blaze appears to have started in the chimney and spread into the attic. No injuries have been reported at this time, and all occupants and pets were accounted for. And Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies, detectives, auxiliary units, and Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue responded to a barricaded suicidal subject inside a home on West Irene Street. The road has been closed in both directions between Lola Lane and Linda Street. And we want to update that story as far as um, that. Negotiations are underway right now. There is a SWAT team um, on scene, and uh, they still do have that area blocked off for now because they are reporting that this is a person with a gun. All right, News 25 will return right after this break. You're watching News 25, the most recognized and farthest reaching local news in Nye County. News 25, local news you can count on. And welcome back. Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies responded to a report of a stabbing at a Pahrump home. A short time later, a woman is under arrest for allegedly being the one holding the knife. Penny Owen has been booked into the Nye County Detention Center on a felony count of battery with use of a deadly weapon, resulting in substantial bodily harm. On the evening of December 15th, officers were dispatched to a residence on West Windsong Lane in reference to a stabbing. Upon arrival, they met a man who was bleeding from the upper portion of his left arm. Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue medics arrived on scene moments later and rushed in to treat the victim's injuries. Deputies located Owen at the residence and detained her. Detectives say when they questioned Owen, she admitted to stabbing the victim with a serrated kitchen knife, resulting in what authorities describe as a substantial injury. She was placed under arrest and transported to jail without incident. Well, the Prump Valley Museum has become the target of vandals. Someone has broken through the fence at the museum several times just this year. There are no suspects, and museum director Marilyn Davis says that there is no clear reason why this is happening. We've had five times this year that they've cut the fence and tried to get into some of the outbuildings and twice where they've tried to actually break into the museum. Right now we have two of our outbuildings. One is a old miner's shack where they just literally kicked the door in uh, no reason at all. And then we have a metal building that we just store assortment of stuff uh, like old paint cans and stuff that they keep breaking and knocking the the door frame and uh, cutting our fence. We have to keep having our fence repaired uh, and it's just getting old. I think it's the same couple of guys yeah. and they're, they're not young kids because I have uh, some video from when they broke in, but it's so, such a distance you can't see a face. And they're probably either late teenagers, early 20s, um, just from the, the height on the door. And on foot, right? And on foot. Um, we're not sure if they're coming 
It's, this is coming on the west side of our property, and we're not sure if they're coming down Basin and across the open field, or if they're coming from the Cottage Grove housing. They go into the one building, they're looking for things, and um, the other building, they just that was just vandalism to kick in that door. I haven't noticed anything taken because there's really nothing out there to take. We've had to, literally, we added um, a couple more cameras to our museum outdoor. Yeah. And then our buildings and ground, um, William Allen, wonderful guy, the last, the break in before, when they tried to break into the museum, we put floodlights on all the outside doors. Uh -huh. So that kind of, I think, stopped that. Yeah. But, um, but I, you've had to install some more security cameras. And now, yeah, and we're now going to probably have to put cameras and lights on all of our outbuildings, which is going to be kind of costly when you're a nonprofit. Well, the last break in was last Tuesday, December 15th, around 7 30 in the evening. If you have seen anything that could help lead authorities to the people responsible for these acts, of vandalism, you're asked to contact the museum directly, 775-751-1970, or call the Nye County Sheriff's Office at 775-751-7000. And in the true spirit of the holiday, Pahrump Holiday Task Force shared with the community Friday serving up a free Christmas meal. News 25 stopped by Nye Communities Coalition, where Linda Wright told us they had already served more than 500 meals. Today is our annual Christmas dinner at the Nike Communities Coalition and what a wonderful day it's been. We've had lots of people, lots of volunteers and it's just been great. We had ham and sweet potatoes and vegetables and cornbread. We have J&D playing the music and people are just dancing in the aisles and singing along and he's been singing doing Christmas carols and all genres of music. Beforehand we did, we helped Nathan Allison and Compass and the homeless with meals before we opened the doors and now we're, we have it for the whole community. We have a room set up with coats and scarves and uh, knitted caps and blankets wow. to, for anybody that needs them. And Santa's here giving, talking to all the children and adults and giving out Christmas gifts. There's a big old Christmas tree and Santa's sitting right next and everybody can get some picture taken with them. And you have anything you want to say to people out there for I this holiday? I want to say Merry Christmas and thanks to all my volunteers and Happy New Year. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas and a joyous and wonderful New Year. Thanks so much, Linda and Santa. Well, the Tribe Motorcycle Club in Pahrump is also spreading some holiday cheer and bringing smiles to the faces of some local youngsters. Members got together this past weekend to hand out gifts during the modified version of their annual Tribe Toy Run. Ralph Pillman, or Redman, says the club couldn't do it without the support of the community. We're giving toys away. We just share with the community. We couldn't do this without the help of Valley Electric and Trudeau and and all those people that uh, contribute to this, our town. So we are truly blessed by living in Pahrump. I think it's a good thing, and it uh, really helps the underpaid families. We, uh, you met the girls the last time we had the interview, and they box it all up. Joanne sets it all up. And then we get the bicycles at the end. Well, you've seen we had a few, and now we've got a lot. Yeah. But uh, not as many as we used to have, a hundred and stuff, but this is COVID right now. Yeah. But uh, those that we can give to is blessed, and those that don't, we'll catch them next year. Yeah. But we'll give them other toys. But we, we're going to do the people that was on the list, and then later on, <laughs> if there's anything left or anything else, we'll do other people. But, you know, there's only so much we can do. Yeah. But this is different than any of the other events that are in town. Yeah. We place boxes all over town, and then... Uh, like the winery and different places like that and uh, the stores, those uh, dollar stores and stuff, they, they've been doing, helping us for years and years. And so with all that and then personal people like uh, Valley Electric and all them, they, they gather up and they give us money, Trudeau gives us money, uh, the salon out there that uh, Angelique works at, they, they help out, they set up the turkeys so that we made sure, made sure we get them. And so, uh, it's truly a, a, a family of Pahrump uh, de effort deal. God bless and everybody have a happy Christmas and a happy New Year. Maybe next year we'll be rolling to, through town again. Yeah. 
All right, we'll be back with more News 25 right after this break. You're watching News 25, brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. News 25, local news you can count on. And Nevada Governor Steve Sisolak says despite the latest COVID variant, he's hopeful for 2022. He shares his message in this video posted to social media today. This is Nevada Governor Steve Sislak, and I wanted to take just a moment this week to wish all my fellow Nevadans a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. The last two years have been difficult, and now we are facing a new COVID-19 variant. Even so, I am filled with hope for the new year, and I am more grateful than ever to serve as governor of this great state. I know there are many Nevadans who will be mourning this holiday season. We've lost more than 8,000 Nevadans to this virus and I can only imagine the pain these families must be feeling at this time. Kathy and I are holding these families in our hearts, and I know our fellow Nevadans will do the same. We're in a much different place this holiday season than where we were last holiday season, and that's because of the COVID-19 vaccines. So many Nevadans have rolled up their sleeves to protect themselves, their families, and our communities, and I am so appreciative of the efforts across the state to ensure Nevadans have access to this vaccine. Because of vaccines, I know many Nevadans are looking forward to safer holiday celebrations. The holiday season is a time of celebrating family and faith. It is also a time to give thanks for all the workers across the state who provide for us each and every day. Thank you to our first responders, the firefighters, police, and EMTs, to the frontline medical personnel in our state's medical facilities, to our educators, truck drivers, and our countless other workers to our state employees, and to all Nevadans who have done everything asked of them and more as we battle this pandemic. I cannot say enough about your resiliency. From myself and First Lady Kathy, my mom Mary, and my daughters Ashley and Carly, I would like to wish all of you the happiest of holidays. Thank you. Well, it is a very Merry Christmas for a family from Michigan who welcomed three identical baby girls this year with the help of a surrogate. Brittany Harris spoke with the fathers about their remarkable story. I just can't imagine not having three. I, there's no point in imagining not having three. <laughs> because that's just a fantasy at this point. Kevin O'Neill and Eric Porninga are still adjusting to their new life after becoming parents to not one, not two, but three identical baby girls. Parker, Robin, and Sylvie were born via surrogacy on September 9th. Starting with the oldest, Parker, she's always just been sort of the leader of the the, the pack in, in the sense that she was the first one born. Robin is the fiery one. She's either calm or she's screaming. And then Sylvie is the smallest and she, we always call her, like she makes the cutest noises, she squeaks. Kevin and Eric have always wanted a family and spent a long time researching their options before deciding on surrogacy. There's lots of different, you know, lots of challenges, not just financial ones as well. And then, you know, we were out, put out into the universe that this is the, that what we wanted. And um, one of our really good friends here um, knew Maureen, who are our surrogate, um, and she connected us. I knew in my heart it was something that I was called to do. They agreed it would be best to use an egg donor, meaning Maureen would not be the biological mother. However, none of them could have predicted that the embryo used would eventually split into three. Identical triplets just completely rare, just so unexpected. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I remember just feeling really up for the adventure. It was like, well, we're here, we're doing this. You know, I felt very confident in my body's ability to take on whatever was gonna come our way. Maureen was closely monitored throughout the pregnancy since she was considered high risk. Fortunately, there were no major complications <laughs> and her delivery at Cleveland Clinic went well. It was an uncomplicated um, cesarean birth. Um, the, uh, the little girls uh, did, did well. They were managed again by our NICU team. All of them were around the, you know, were born in the four to five pound uh, weight range. Um, and I think that they stayed within the NICU um, about two to three weeks. The girls are now getting ready to celebrate their first Christmas, and Kevin and Eric couldn't be more grateful. Santa will come, but yeah. he will most likely bring uh, diapers. The more the merrier. For Cleveland Clinic, I'm Brittany Harris.
There are going to be some busy dads. Well, even though Maureen is not the biological mother of the girls, Kevin and Eric hope she'll always be part of their lives. And the girls will know her as Auntie Mo. And the Nye County Sheriff's Office has reported an update on that standoff that was happening on Irene right. Street. They say that the suspect has been taken into custody at this time and the road will reopen shortly. Nice. Okay. And um, let's see, we're going to save a pet. Dozens of pets are going to be spending Christmas at one of our local shelters as they await finding their forever home. For today's Save a Pet, Darby O'Donnell Westerman is back at the cat room, cat house, at Desert Haven Animal Society, where she introduces us to Mook. Hi, I'm Darby here at Desert Haven Animal Society, and today we are joined with Mook. Mook is a three-year-old domestic short hair gray and white kitty beautiful green eyes this kitty's so silly um he has a little trait that he likes to do he loves to get his belly rubbed um and when you approach him he will actually roll upside down trying to go and get you to rub his super fluffy and soft belly if you want to come and see mook or any of his friends here at desert haven animal society you can give them a call 775-751-7020 or you can look them up on their facebook page at desert haven animal society News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Ooh, beautiful sunset, but looks like we still have rain on the horizon. We'll have more on your weather update right after this. News 25 Weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee, the dollop of sour cream on your burrito, the melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hi, good evening, Nevada. It's John Kohler from the KPVM Channel 25 Weather Studios. A heartfelt Merry Christmas to you all. It's very nice to uh, uh, share your time on uh, Christmas Eve. And let's I tell you all about the Christmas weather we can expect. Actually, it's, it's been pretty nice today. Fernley Fallon, Carson City, uh, heated up to the mid and uh, upper 40s. Uh, down to Tonopah, it's 37 degrees. Not so great, but uh, Goldfield back on track at 40. Beatty, 53. Amargosa and Las Vegas tied at 61. So they're weather twins there. Out to Death Valley, 71 degrees for high today. And here in the paradise of Pahrump, well, it's... Take a look at the Christmas miracle. It is 52 degrees for our current temperature and a low tonight of just uh, 41. Swampy weather, Santa's uh, flying into tonight. Uh, that humidity index up to 69%. We are having some rain, and uh, as the lights went out at 434, we all said, oh, gosh, it's going to continue tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, well, Christmas Day, uh, it's going to start off actually kind of beautiful, and uh, we're going to have some clouds that add in, of course, and uh, late at night uh, it'll rain again. But uh, we're going to have a beautiful Christmas day tomorrow, a uh, high of 52, low of 39. Uh, that humidity sticking with us. And as we head into the week, uh, yeah, we got clouds. We got all this, these winds up to 17 miles per hour, my goodness. Uh, but uh, Saturday, Sunday uh, for Christmas and Boxing Day, well, it's going to be a beautiful day uh, until the evening. And then it gets a little swampy and wet. Uh, especially on Monday. Oh my goodness. And Wednesday, Thursday, we might see some white after Christmas. We're going to be looking at some snow and uh, in the forecast uh, for Thursday. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that and let you know how it all goes and develops. But have a great Christmas. It's going to be some beautiful days for the weekend and uh, really looking forward to seeing you back on the other side. So be safe out there and Merry Christmas. Here's Deanna. Thanks so much, John. We are wearing our ugly sweaters. We John, are. This one is Christmas, Christmas Eve. And this I one, love yours. This one's, I guess you do this and <laughs> there you go. I can't get it over there. I have there the, the nice Christmas unicorn. On the niceness and then naughty. I just have to say that this is actually Stacy's sweater. <laughs> <laughs> we, had to, we had to dress appropriately for Christmas Eve. But I so. did win the ugly sweater contest with you your other did. sweater that I And got wore. a trophy. I just borrow her sweaters all the time. And you got a trophy for uh, cookie decorating, too, if I remember right. Yeah, that, that was pretty bad, too. <laughs> <laughs> We're having fun. We've been going to so many um, different events and it's been so much fun this holiday season. We hope everybody has a wonderful Christmas because you definitely deserve to have some fun have um, your family close by and enjoy them and uh, I think we've we know that more than ever um, this yeah. last couple of years right 
been and, tough. Yeah, definitely safe. They do have the Saspiration Patrol going, um, and that is with all of the law enforcement agencies yeah. uh, throughout uh, the state of Nevada. So definitely, you know, drive safely. Especially with the weather, because we got some weird weather going on right now. <laughs> we for sure do. Well, and all those cancellations and the flights and all this <sighs> craziness going on. Um, we wish you a wonderful, wonderful Merry Christmas, and we'll see you back here on Monday. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. I'm Stacy Jensen. Good, Good night. night.